Hello, uh, in this video we'll talk about convolution, cross-correlation, and autocorrelation. We'll first introduce the user-defined convolution and how to implement it, and then we'll move on to how to implement cross-correlation and autocorrelation and what each means. Convolution is defined as the impact of a signal on another signal, or a measure of how a signal can be shaped or modified by a different signal. And we can express it as x with the asterisk in between and then h. Translating this into MATLAB code will give us the convolution function or the built-in conv function and the inputs being x and h. Cross-correlation is related to convolution in the sense that it is actually the convolution between x and h of negative n. x of n convolved with h of negative n gives us cross-correlation. That's why in MATLAB we can calculate the, uh, the cross-correlation using the built-in function conf by passing it x as its first input and then flip lrh as the second input. Similarly, we can call the built-in cross-correlation function in MATLAB, which is x core between x and h. So either of these uh, MATLAB commands will give us the same results. They both will give us the cross-correlation between x and h. Finally, autocorrelation, from its name, it's an operation between a signal and itself. It is simply put, the convolution between x and x of negative n, the convolution between x of n and x of negative n. So that's why to evaluate the autocorrelation of x in MATLAB, we can call conv between x and flip lrx, or similarly, we can call the cross-correlation function and only pass it one argument or one input, which is the signal x, or we can call the cross-correlation function between x and itself, so x comma x. Let's uh, define convolution or try to understand the concept behind it or how to evaluate convolution. On the signal, I mean, on the left here we see a signal named x, and on the right we see a signal named h. To evaluate x convolved with h, we have to flip the signal h, that's the first step, and obtain h of negative n, and then we will shift signal h along x. After every shift, we will multiply the overlapping elements, and then sum their, the result of the multiplication, and that will give us one element in the convolution output. And then we're going to repeat the steps of shifting multiplying overlapping elements and then adding. So the first step is to flip. Second step is to shift once, multiply the overlapping elements and then add. Shift again, multiply uh, the overlapping elements, sum them and then evaluate the uh, next element in the convolution output and so on. We'll repeat until we're done with um, the shifting. There's no more uh, shifting that is needed meaning the convolution will eventually reach zero. Here we have another uh, method of illustrating the idea of convolution between x and h. We take h, we flip it, and then we shift it along x. We find the overlapping elements, multiply them together, and then add the result of the multiplication and evaluate the convolution element. Here there is a constant number, so the overlapping elements, if we multiply them, uh, the, results, uh, the result is constant in here. That's why you will notice that the convolution is constant. And then uh, by the end of the convolution, there will be no more overlapping elements. So the result, uh, the, the convolution output will decrease until it reaches zero for this particular example. And we mentioned uh, that in a separate video that convolution in MATLAB can be implemented um, as conv uh, using the conv function. For example, if you want to evaluate the convolution between f of n and g of n, in MATLAB this is simply equal to conv f comma g. And if we want to plot this in MATLAB, assuming f and g are discrete signals, we can call stem between uh, with the input starting at zero. I mean the first input, which is the x-axis, it starts at zero until it reaches the length of the signal we want to plot, minus one, so such that the 
the x-axis will have the values of n, and n starts at 0, increments by 1, until it reaches the uh, last index in y minus 1. And the y-axis will be uh, y of n, which is the signal we want to plot. Now let's introduce the first method for evaluating convolution in MATLAB. The first method depends 100% on the formula for evaluating convolution, which is the summation between x of k times h of n minus k. So here we already have defined the uh, function syntax. So we have a function named myconv, and the function has one output named y, and it has two inputs, which are the two signals that we want to convolve, x and h. So let's first evaluate the length of the convolution. The length of the convolution will be the length of both signals added together minus 1. So len will be evaluated as length of x, our first signal, plus length of h and then minus 1, semicolon. This is the length of the convolution output, which will be length of y at the end. The next step is we're initializing uh, y with an array of all zeros. Uh, we already know that we want just one uh, row and len number of elements or len number of columns. And the next step here, we're setting the index at len or the element at index len in x to zero. That means we're making sure that x is equal to the same size as y, so it is still x, but it has zeros at the end, such that it is equal in size uh, with y. This will help us later on in the for loop to avoid uh, running into errors. The next step here, which is missing, is to pad signal h with zeros. So we'll repeat the same step, but uh, instead of having signal x, we'll say h len bracket equals zero semicolon. Now in the for loop here, or in the nested for loop, we're going to evaluate the summation right here for each element in y. That's why we have two nested for loops. The first for loop will iterate for every value of n in, in len, or for every element in y. We're evaluating one element in y in one iteration in the outside loop. The inner loop will evaluate the summation. So here we're iterating through k, which is every element in x and h, and evaluating one element in y. So we're going to say, to take care of the summation, we're going to say y at n is equal to y at n, with the previous value of y at n, and then we want to add to it the result of this multiplication. So we're going to say plus x at k times, this is one element, so I don't need to put the, uh, the dot. Having it or not is the same, but it is not necessary at this moment. So I'm going to say x at k, pay attention to the cases now, uh, times h at n minus k. But notice here, both n and k start at 1. So in the first iteration, n minus k will be actually 1 minus 1, which is 0. So to avoid running into an error here, because the first index in MATLAB is 1, it's not 0. So I'm going to add 1 here, just to make sure that I will start at 1 rather than 0, because 0 is not an index for elements in MATLAB. This is all there is to evaluate the convolution function or to define the convolution function by applying the formula. However, notice that this method is actually not recommended because as you notice here, it uses two for loops or nested for loops. And we already know that for loops are uh, slow and therefore they're not really recommended. 
So let's move on to a different uh, method to implement convolution. Now let's run a test on the code for myconf that we just wrote in MATLAB. I already have the code written here and two variables or two arrays to test it with. I have x and h and I, I am calling already myconf surrounded by TikTok and the built-in convolution function which is conf uh, also surrounded by tick and talk on the same arrays. So running this test will allow us to compare the two outputs and see if our function uh, produces the correct output. So the first output we see here is the result of myconf, which is our user-defined convolution function, and this is the output of the built-in conf function. And we can notice that they both output the same results. The second method depends on matrix manipulation. So let's illustrate how it works using an example. We have two arrays, x and h, and we want to convolve them together. The first step in this method is to create a matrix named P, such that P is equal to x transpose times h. The reason why we take the transpose of x is because we want to enable matrix multiplication. So x transpose is now of size 4 by 1, h is of size 1 by 3. So multiplying these two matrices is possible and it will result in a matrix of size 4 by 3. Okay, And the next step is to find the reverse diagonal elements and then add them together. The first reverse diagonal elements are just 10 by itself. So this will be the first element in the convolution output. The next diagonal uh, elements are 20 and 20. We're going to add 20 plus 20. This will give us 40. So that is the second element in the convolution. And after that, we have 30 plus 40 plus 30, which will give us 40 plus 60. That is 100. So I'm going to say 100. The next diagonal elements are 60 plus 60 plus 40, that is going to be 160. And finally, uh, not finally, we'll still have two more diagonal elements or sets of diagonal elements, 90 plus 80, that is 170. The last one is just 120 by itself. This will be our last element in the uh, convolution output. This is how the method works if we want to solve it manually. Now we're going to move on to implementing this method using MATLAB code. So function y is equal to myconf x of h starts with evaluating lin, which is the length of the convolution output. And we said it has to be uh, the length of the first signal. So we're going to say length of x plus the length of the second signal, which is h minus 1 and then semicolon at the end. To evaluate p in MATLAB, we'll simply uh, call x transpose and the transpose operator in MATLAB is just the apostrophe and then multiply that with x, uh, multiply that with, with h. Remember here we want to perform matrix multiplication so we don't put the, uh, the dot because the dot is for element-wise multiplication and we want to perform matrix multiplication between x transpose and h. Notice here in the in the example that we did, we, we're always finding the reverse diagonal elements of the submatrices. The first submatrix was of size one by one, and the reverse diagonal elements we only had one, which is ten. The next step we increase the size by one, so we have a two by two matrix. And the diagonal elements of this 2 by 2 matrix were, or the reverse diagonal elements, were 20 and 20. In the next iteration, the size became 3 by 3. And the reverse diagonal elements were 30, 40, 30, and so on. So it's 3 by 3. But later on, at some point, the size will decrease. For example, here at the end, it became a 1 by 1 submatrix. 
But to make the programming of this function in MATLAB easier, we're going to modify matrix B. This is matrix B. We're going to modify it such that the sub-matrices will always increase in size. It's 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, and then 4 by 4, and then 5 uh, by 5, and so on. So to fix this, what we're going to do is pad matrix B with zeros such that it, it is equal in length with len. The way we can do this is by saying P is equal, or actually P len, where finding the len index, which initially did not exist in P. Um, this is going to be our row number. Our column number is also len. And we want to change these elements to zeros. And any other elements in between that did not exist, MATLAB will create them for me and it will assign them a value of zero. So this line of code is added just to make our for loop at the end of the function definition slightly easier. So in the for loop, we're iterating through every n or through every element in y of n, which is the convolution output. And we know the length is len, so we're going to start at index 1 until we reach len. Inside the for loop, we're going to evaluate every element in y. And we said every element in y is simply the summation of the reverse diagonal elements in the submatrices of P, starting with the 1 by 1 submatrix, the 2 by 2 submatrix. That means the submatrix, to, to find it, I can I will write a note here, submatrix uh, from P is simply P. I don't want just the first element. I want the first until n. So I'm going to say 1 until n, comma, 1 until n. So this is a square, a square submatrix from P whose size increments by 1 in every iteration in the loop. So the first time we enter the loop, it's 1 until 1, so that's 1, and then 1. So it will be B11, which is just 10 by itself. The second time we enter the loop, it will be from 1 until 2. So the submatrix for the number of rows starting at 1, ending at 2. So that's the submatrix 2 by 2, from 1 until 2. And then also from the first column until the second column. The third time we enter the loop, it will be from the first row until the third row, and from the first column until the third column, and so on. So I'm going to use P1 colon N comma 1 colon N uh, to make it generic for the for loop. So Y of N will be equal, we said the summation, so sum function, of, we want the reverse diagonal elements of the submatrix P1 and so on. So the reverse diagonal elements will, will require me to use two functions. To find the reverse diagonal elements, I will need to use the diag function on flip LR P1 through N, 1 through N. So let's start with diag. But instead of putting the matrix directly, I want to flip it because I want the reverse diagonal element. So I'm going to say flip LR on P 1 through N, comma 1 through N. Close the bracket of P, close the bracket of flip LR, close the bracket of diag, and then we'll need to close the bracket for the summation, semicolon. So don't forget to close all the brackets that you open. And then semicolon at the end because we're not interested in displaying each element separately in Y, but rather we want to evaluate Y simply before we exit the function. So this completes method two, which is the matrix manipulation method to find the, uh, or to evaluate the user defined function for convolution. Certainly this method is better than the previous one, since it only uses a one for loop. Now we have the code for myconf written using method two, which is the matrix manipulation method in MATLAB. Again, at the beginning, I have two arrays to test myconf with. 
and I'm comparing the output of my conf with that of uh, the built-in conf function. Let's run the script file and compare the results. We notice that both both uh, my conf and conf reduce the same outputs. Now the third method depends on the concept of flip shift multiply sum that we introduced earlier. So let's illustrate this through the same example we had. We have x and h and when n is 1, meaning we're evaluating the first element in y, this is also going to be our shift amount. So when we shift by 1, we're evaluating y1. Okay, we have matrix x unchanged as it is. This is x. This is flip h. So flip lr h. So we take x as it is. We flip matrix h or array h. And then we find the overlapping elements. In this case, it's 1 and 10. 1 times 10 is 10. That means y at 1 is 10. The first element in y is 10. The next step is to shift once again. So these steps will repeat. We only flip once, of course. Shift multiply sum will repeat until we evaluate the last element in y. Here, we shift it once again. So the total shift amount is 2. So y at 2 will be equal to the result of adding the result of multiply, uh, multiplying the overlapping elements, which are 1 and 2, uh, 1 and 20, so 1 times 20, plus 2 times 10. 1 times 20 is 20, plus 20, does, that gives us four, uh, 40. So the convolution at index 2 is 40. So we're going to repeat the shift step, multiply over, over the overlapping elements, and then add them, evaluate the next convolution uh, element, and so on. Now let's implement a MATLAB function that performs this algorithm. We start by evaluating len, the length of the convolution. Len length len is equal to length of x plus length of h minus 1 semicolon the next step is to pad x with zeros at the end to make it equal in size with the output which is y after that we do the same with signal h so i'm going to say h len is equal to zero, semicolon. Here I'm creating a new variable named fh, which will store in it flip lr uh, h, which will give me h of minus k. So fh is actually equal to flip lr, there's no space in between, just flip lr bracket h, semicolon. Now in this for loop, we're going to evaluate every element in y by summing the result of multiplying overlapping elements. Remember here we're taking initially the first element in x with the last element in fh. And in the next iteration, we're going to take the first element in, at, in x with this element, which is uh, the last two elements in fh. So first two elements with the last two. And then it will be the first three elements in x and the last three elements in fh and so on. So let's tra translate this into MATLAB code. What we want to sum is an element-wise multiplication between x and flip lr h, which is fh. However, we don't want to multiply all the elements. We just want to start with the first and end at n. This is from x. 
we'll, we'll take the first element. So in the first iteration, n is equal to 1. We want the first element, which is from 1 until 1. In the second iteration, we want the first 2. So it will be 1 until 2. Index 1 until 2 from x. Third iteration, it will be index 1 until 3, and so on. So for x, this is good. Now we'll, let's take care of fh. But before that, we know we need element-wise multiplication, so I'm going to say dot times fh. From fh, I want the last element, and then the last two elements, the last three elements, and so on. So I'm going to say fh until end, semicolon. Actually, I want to close the bracket of sum first. So sum bracket all of this code and then close the bracket of sum here and then semicolon so from fh we want the last element then the last two elements then the last three elements and so on so that means here i have to say end minus n and then plus one the reason why I added one is because when n is one, which is during the first iteration, when n is one, then I will have here end minus one plus one until end, which is end until end, which is really what I want uh, for the first iteration to have. Okay, so end. And, uh, and minus n plus 1. Now this concludes the third method for implementing uh, myconv using MATLAB. Now running the uh, user-defined myconv for the third method, which is using the flip shift multiply sum. In MATLAB to test it we're gonna get the same output again the first output here is the output of my conf and the second output is the output of the built-in convolution function and we notice that they do match now the fourth method will introduce to implement my conf in MATLAB it depends on the call of the circular shift in MATLAB we'll first evaluate the length of the convolution output and it will be len is equal to length of x plus length of h minus 1 semicolon this method depends on creating a new matrix named z and inside z we're going to take care of the possible shifts for x matrix x we start with zero shift, zero circular shift, and then one circular shift, two circular shifts, and so on. So we're going to iterate through the length of h until we evaluate every shift that is needed for x. So inside the for loop here, we're evaluating one single column from z, which is this column. And it will be simply um, circ shift, which is the circular shift function, circ shift on x. But the first time we enter the loop, we, want, we don't want to do any shifting. So we're going to say circ shift instead of 0, we will put n minus 1. And then close the bracket. Semicolon, it's circ shift, I was missing the T. So N in the first loop, in the first iteration is 1. N minus 1 is 0. So we're, gonna, we're not going to do any shifting. We'll just put X as it is. And then the second time we enter the loop, N will be, uh, will be 1. It will be 2 actually. So N minus 1 will be 1. And then we're going to shift by 1 and so on until we uh, have the same size, I mean, I mean, we, until we have a number 
of column in Z that is equal in length with H because that's our limit for the for loop. And then the output of convolution Y will be equal to H times Z transpose. So this matrix H multiplied by Z transpose. This method also depends on the concept of shift multiply sum, but it takes care of the summation inside the matrix multiplication here. Because one of the steps for matrix multiplication is to multiply the rows by the columns and then add the results together. So this is the, the last method in implementing uh, my confusing MATLAB. Now we'll test the fourth and last method, which is using circ shift in MATLAB. We already have the function definition at the end of the file, and I have created uh, two arrays, which are the same uh, arrays that we used earlier. I'm calling my conv surrounded by TikTok versus conv also surrounded by TikTok. We're now going to run the file. We'll notice that both functions have the same output for the convolution. Now to implement our own user-defined function for cross-correlation, we'll start by defining the function. We're going to say function, and then our output is y equals to, I'm going to call the function my x-core, and the inputs are still x and h. And then here I'm going to say end. Inside the function, I'm going to depend on my conf. But before I call my conv on x with flip lrh, I'm going to make sure that the sizes of x and h are equal. This way, I will make sure that the output of my x core and the output of the MATLAB function will be the same. So I'm going to say if, and then check the length of x compared with the length of h, see which one is smaller, the one that is smaller if there's one that's smaller than the other, will be padded with zero. So I'm going to say if length, remember here you don't need brackets, so it's just length of x bracket less than length of h, then we want to make sure that x is the same size as H, so we'll say x length of h is equal to zero. Here I'm not gonna say else, I will say else if as one word, and the reason why is because they, I mean the arrays x and h may be, they might be of the same length. If they're of the same length, I'm not gonna modify any of them. So in this case, I'm gonna say else if as one word in MATLAB, else if the length of h this time less than the length of x. If that's the case, then I will make h bigger such that it's equal in size with x. Close the bracket, close the other bracket, say equal zero. And then end. I will, I will only need one end because else if it's just one word. Now I took care of making sure that the arrays have the same size. The last step is to simply evaluate y as the convolution. I will, I will use my conf, so without using the built-in functions, I'm going to call my conf on x with flip lr bracket h. Close the bracket semicolon and then that's it. Remember here, because we want h of minus n, and we said h of minus n in MATLAB is flip lr h. Now we added our uh, my x core function in MATLAB, and observe that my x core uses my conf. So in order for my x core function to work, we have to have the definition for my conf um, in the same file, whether above it or below it, but all functions must appear at the end of the file. 
to test our function, we also called my x core, which is the function we want to test on the same signals as earlier. And we called the built in cross correlation function in MATLAB, which is x core on the same signals surrounded by TikTok. Running this test will show us two arrays for the cross correlation outputs. And we're going to compare these two arrays to ensure that our function actually works. And we notice that both functions produce the same output for the cross correlation. The last topic here is autocorrelation. We said autocorrelation is also a function of convolution, but it's a convolution between a signal with itself after flipping it. And it's a measure of similarity between a signal and a delayed version of that signal. Hence, it will help us find repeating patterns uh, such as those happening in periodic signals. So as an example here, we have the plot of the autocorrelation of a sinusoidal signal or a periodic signal. In particular, it's the cosine wave. So if we plot the autocorrelation of a cosine wave, we'll get a graph that looks like this. Here I used stem. Notice how the x-axis is the lag or the delay. When there is zero lag between a cosine wave with itself, there is going to be 100% similarity. When there is some lag, the similarity will decrease until it is totally um, different from itself, so the opposite of itself. So the similarity will reach zero, and then it, there will be negative similarity. But there's going to be also another peak that is smaller, and then the similarity will increase until it reaches a maximum value, another maximum value here. But this maximum value at, at this moment is smaller than this one, because the signal um, will be out of phase with itself. If we plot the autocorrelation of a random Gaussian noise signal at lag zero, we're going to see 100% similarity. Anything beyond zero or less than zero will have some randoms, I mean, some similarities because it's a random signal, but it's only maximized when there is zero lag because it is a random signal. It's not similar to itself or it's not periodic. We can say that at lag is uh, at lag zero or at zero lag, the autocorrelation of a random signal will look like a pulse again at lag zero. To implement autocorrelation in MATLAB, the function will be very simple. We don't need to worry about making sure that x is equal to itself because it's the same signal. So I'm going to start by defining the function. Function, the output will be called y is equal to. I'm going to call the function my auto core. And this function will only take one input, and that is x. I'm going to end it here. And y will be evaluated as my conv between x with flip lr h, uh, not h, it's x again. We don't have h. Close the bracket to my column, and that's it. So this will be the end of evaluating my autocor or the autocorrelation function using the uh, my conv that we initialized earlier. Thank you for watching. If you have a question, please let me know.